Hi everyone, I'm Francesca from Schools DXB and I'm here with uh, the principal from Uptown School, Mr. Chris Rommel. Hi. Hi Francesca. And today we're going to find out a little bit more about his school in 10 questions. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. No problem at all. Welcome to Uptown. Thank you, that's very kind of you. So you have been the principal Uptown for how long now? Uh, this is just the start of my second year. So I arrived back in Dubai uh, last August and I've been uh, enjoying myself at Uptown since. Oh lovely. And the school, how old is the school? It's quite established, right? It, it is. The, the school started 10 years ago as, as a primary school, just on, on a slightly smaller site uh, further into Murdoch. Uh, we moved to this site about four years ago, uh, really because the demand for the IB and a quality IB education was just increasing all the time. So we've been here for four years and, and we're growing every year. Great. So let me just, just jump in right away with the first question. So can you tell us a little bit about your curriculum at the school and how that translates into an educational program? Okay. So obviously we're an IB school. Um, that can mean different things in different schools. Yeah, there's lots of schools out there that have the badge of being an IB school, uh, but only do small parts of the IB. Oh. Uh, but, but at Uptown, we're very much an IB school. Uh, we, um, we live the philosophy of the IB. We live the ethos of the IB. We firmly believe, as the IB do, that education changes the world. And at our job as educators is to, to grow children that have got the qualifications, but also got the the... the personal attributes to, mm -hmm. and the confidence to go out there and change the world. So it, it's a big mission statement. Um, and obviously then translating that down into what happens in the classroom is very important. Um, we work across three different programs. Uh, the PYP program, which is for the primary school. Uh, the MYP program, which takes you from the start of secondary school up until uh, 16 years of age. And then of course the DP program, which is widely regarded as, as the sort of the most rigorous pre-university course that, that there right. is out there. So they're the foundations, really, the building blocks of yeah. what it's about. And, and what the IB is, is, is wonderful in that it, it, it forces schools to do a lot of the really important things. And lots of good schools out there with other curricula will do lots of these things, but in the IB it's absolutely inherent. So core to everything we do is, is the student learner profile, oh, wow. which is a, a list of, of 10, I think, attributes of what we really want the students to uh, engender and what we think will lead them to become internationally minded. Right. And, and so all your teaching kind of surrounds that then, really? It's what you're Absolutely, always kind of looking at. yeah. Wow. And, and we, it, it comes down to the planning. So when teachers are planning every lesson, they're thinking about these learner profile attributes and which ones they want to bring in. Uh, they also think a lot about um, which learning skills they need to bring in. And while, as I say, lots of other curricular schools will do this, uh, in the IB it's actually inherent into what we mm. do and in the planning. Mm. So yeah. it's a lot more than just trying to teach kids how to add up. It's about who they are as people and helping them become the right sort of people. Um, what kind of learner thrives at your school, though? Are you a very selective school and you're looking for gifted kids? Do you take beginner ESL children who speak other languages? Absolutely. We, we're uh, an inclusive school at our heart. Uh, we actually have a bit of a problem with the word gifted <laughs> because uh, at the heart of the IB is that we're helping students grow and become good learners. So the idea that we'd be fit for some learners but not for others, we wouldn't really fit with the IB philosophy. Sure. We're, we're very inclusive. Uh, we have students with, with all different sorts of learning needs uh, and we fulfill them in, in a in a high quality way to be honest. So there's ESL and learning support departments and absolutely okay. yeah um, but we also have the high attaining students as well uh, who go on you know we, we haven't had any graduates yet because we're still a growing school but okay. our first graduate in year this year we're hoping we'll go on to some of the best universities around the world so we're, we're a completely uh, inclusive school all the way through. K through 12? K through 12 what? yeah. What, what about the teachers at your school? Who are they? Uh, well, our teachers, we're a genuinely international school in terms of our student body, and I think that's reflected in our teachers. Uh, we do have high proportions of teachers from the, the usual sort of Western centres, so we have a lot of British teachers, we have a lot of Australian teachers, South African teachers, but we also have obviously lots of teachers from the Arabic world, uh, and we do have teachers from, from all different types of places, uh, Canada, India, and, and so on. So they all come together yeah. and, and embody yeah. that philosophy, that's great. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's very much a philosophy in terms of the IB. We're looking for people who understand the IB, not necessarily people with experience in teaching it, 
uh, but people who understand it and feel natural, that they're natural, a natural fit with the IB. Um, and we're always looking for teachers who've got a lot of energy, who can uh, bring a lot to, to the table, and who believe in kids, yeah. and who believe that kids can be successful. And yeah. you know, the worst thing a teacher can do at that time is to write the kid off. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, that's just not tolerated at all. So. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the kinds of approaches your school uses to teach literacy, for example? We use a blended approach with, with phonics uh, and with sight words. We use uh, words they weigh and uh, letters and sounds down in the primary school. Uh, but really, uh, teaching kids to read is the start of their journey to love literature. Uh, and we see that all the way through the school. And, and something not just the IB, but our own uh, ethos is that reading is a core tenant mm -hmm. of, of what makes a good learner. Uh, and we try to, we have lots of author visits at the school. We have a thriving library, which I'm, I'm sure you, you're going to have a look at later. Um, so reading starts, uh, starts in those early years with the, with the phonics, but goes throughout, um, you know, all the way up to the DP uh, English program with the world literature, which is of an incredibly high and varied quality. Yeah, okay, great. How does your school approach teaching and learning maths, mathematics? Well, I'm, a, I'm a, an old maths teacher, right. so okay, good. <laughs> you're possibly a bit of my favourite <laughs> subject. We could be here for some time. Um, some people will tell you that this is the Achilles heel of the IB. Okay. And they're absolutely wrong. Uh, I would say as a maths profession, maths teaching professional who absolutely adores learning maths and think it's the most fascinating thing in the world of how kids learn maths, the, the PYP and the MYP and the DP are exactly what maths teachers should be doing. It's The focus is on conceptual understanding. Right. So it's not just about teaching them how to add two numbers together, it's really getting to the idea of what those numbers mean and what it means to add them together. Why is it when we get over 10, we flip into another column? You know, why don't we just keep having symbols all the way up to 100 or more? Mm -hmm. And so it's addressing those concepts rather than just the skills. Obviously, we do the skills as well, but it's, uh, it's, it's focusing on those concepts. When we come through to the MYP, for a, as a good example, we have four categories in terms of how we assess the kids. And, and one of those categories is their knowledge and having that high standard uh, of knowledge and knowing how to do mathematical techniques. But the other criteria are about linking maths to the real world, about spotting mathematical patterns and understanding mathematical right. patterns, and about communicating and articulating maths, which any maths teacher in the world will tell you is the key, the absolute key to being able to, to do maths is be able to explain. Maths. Yeah, and related to the real world, right? Absolutely, it's, yeah, it's, it's a core a part. Yeah, and it's a, one of the four criteria for, for MYP maths is relating things to the real world. And then when you go, go on to the DP in maths, we have the, the exploration, the maths exploration, where students have to find some aspect in the real world, and we try and encourage them to pick up something they like and look for the maths in it, and explore the maths in it, and, uh, and link that to existing theories, and sometimes come up with some original work, but that would be you know, yeah. the very highest attainment students. Uh, an example I've, I've seen before is uh, a young student who's into ballet dancing. She, was, she did ballet dancing to quite a high level, uh, and she looked at the arcs that her hand made when she was doing different ballet moves, and it was absolutely fascinating. But and that's what real maths is about. Yeah. It's important to be able to solve quadratic equations, but you need that deep yeah. relational understanding of yeah. maths, and, and the IB encourages that from a very early age. Oh, wonderful, that's a great answer. That's good. Um, what about? Can you tell us about play in the school? How that uh, has a role within your school, for example. Yeah, play can mean different things for different ages. I think if you if you went down to our earlier section, you'd see learning yeah. through play uh, quite evidently there and what the kids are doing. We have lots of areas set up for, for them to, to learn through play with, with shops and things like that, where they, they go and, and sort of learn themselves and teach themselves. But we try and keep that element of play all the way through. And, and play becomes maybe... Uh, as the kids get older, they talk more about engagement and it being motivated learning and learning that they're enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I firmly believe that learning is an inherently enjoyable pastime. People love to learn. Yeah. And I think oftentimes what we do is when we start to put the pressure on kids and we start to make it all about assessment, yeah. they start to panic and they, they switch up from, the, from their natural sort of love of learning. So it, it's inherent all the way through what we do, and all the way up to the IB, where it really there becomes about up to the DP, sorry, where it really becomes about choice 
And there's a lot of choice in the IB in terms of they have to do their extended essay in the DP programme, uh, which again is something that they research, something of their own interest. They have to do a 4,000 word essay, which I, th I read uh, last year that it's the most um, challenging academic uh, task that students are given across the world at that level is this 4,000 word extended essay. But it's really about them finding something they're interested in and a pursuing passion, that. Basically. Absolutely. Wow, yeah. that's passion. really good. Yeah. So what happens at lunchtime uh, here in your yeah. school? Do you have everyone coming together at the same time? Or is it... Uh, well, we have um, things are split slightly between the different schools. So okay. the primary school uh, has their lunchtime split. Um, so we've got a canteen for the primary school, we've got a canteen for the, the secondary school. Both have places where students can sit and eat hot meals okay. um, or have a, grab a quick sandwich and go and eat outside. We have lots of external eating areas. Uh, but what we're trying to do more and more is to put activities on in lunchtime. And if you come and you see our, our gyms, they're always busy during lunchtime. And often with the older kids running things for the, for the younger students. Um, and we're trying to bring more of that in. And you, you see our kids, especially when the weather gets like this, they're all, they love they being outside. Be outside. And they love yeah, you have to take advantage so. of that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. Can you tell us about your homework policy at the school? Yeah. Well, we see homework as important, um, but we see it really, especially if we take the primary school, as a way of parents engaging in their children's learning and, and a way of parents having an eye into what the students are doing. Okay. So you'll see our homework tasks uh, are very well organised. We don't have any sort of last minute or finish off this homework. And it'll sort of, it's, it's Thursday, so I've got to give you maths homework. Yeah. The homework is set a week in advance. Uh, and it's really things that engage, uh, that help students engage with their parents and with their learning. Um, and it's great. My, my daughter last year in grade one, uh, her homework uh, was, she had to feel her heart. She had to start, sit with, with us and, and talk about what she felt when she felt her heart. And then she had to run around the house three times and do it again <laughs> and talk to us about it and yeah. then make some notes herself. So that really sort of experiential learning, but really getting them to question. Obviously, inquiry yeah. is something we haven't mentioned, but students starting to ask questions and learning to ask questions, becoming better at asking questions. Being curious. Being curious and, and being allowed to be curious yeah. is a core part of the IB all the way through. So And is it different for different ages? I mean, you set certain times for the lower grades and then upper grades have longer, obviously. Uh, yeah, so in the primary school, it's it's worked on that sort of one sheet a week so the students all know what their homework is for that week at the oh, start okay. of the week which really helps parents manage their time Plan. at home. Yeah. Uh, in, in the secondary school, it, it obviously builds up. So we have a homework timetable, which gives recommended amounts of time each day and which subjects will be on each day. But it's, it, we still go as and when, really, when things are needed. The, the IB encourages lots of uh, longer-term projects, in, okay. in the MYP particularly. So there will be some sort of traditional homework tasks of 10 maths questions. There's also things that the kids will be working on, researching over time and looking into different things. So longer, there's yeah. less longer in it. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. over a week or, or two weeks or right. longer. And then, of course, when you get to the DP, the DP can be seen as more traditional. You know, it's, it's a very content-heavy course. It, it's very rigorous. Um, and, you know, the demands on the students are, are high. Yeah. There's no getting away from it. Yes. Yeah. As someone who's worked in British schools for a, a proportion of my career, uh, and you look at the A-level, while the A-level is a fantastic qualification, the demands, compared to the demands on a DP student, they're just, they're just not there. You know, you do, the, the three higher level subjects of DP are pretty much equivalent to three A-levels. And then you've got another three subjects at standard level. Wow. And then the, That's another interview. The that would be great. Yeah, yeah. talk about the comparisons between yeah, them. Yeah. It is big though, isn't it? It, it is. And it's um, what, it, what it means is it, you have to become successful in the DP. You have to be, you have to have worked, you have to have gathered all the skills that the PYP and the MYP are trying to teach you. Mm. And this is why students sometimes have difficulty going straight into the DP because they've had a more traditional education. And then when it comes to the DP and they've got to do a 4,000 word essay, and they've never done any, really done research in right. an academic way, it catches them out. Um, so, you know, that's why the MYP is such a great preparation for it. Um, but then the demands are high. And has everybody a candidate for the DP? Yeah, we, yeah. we, we try, we, we try and get everyone through. We, we very much see once you're an uptown student, you're with us, you're one of us, and we're going to get you through as okay. much as we can. There does come a point, obviously, with some students where 
that challenge for the DP wouldn't be the best thing for them. Mm. Um, we, we take as many as we possibly can, and we're always disappointed if we do lose a student at that point. But at the end of the day, we have to advise the students and the families on what's best yes, for them. For them. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes there's alternative paths. There's there is the the career program, career related program that the IB uh, provides, which we probably look at in future for those students. And one of our sister schools does that already, so we'll often liaise with them and speak to them about oh, keeping wonderful. them within the time. And as, you're able to do partial DP though, right? You're that able exactly, to you can yeah. do some. Yeah, what, what, what we do, the, the approach we take is that all students start on the, the full diploma course. Right. But if it's at the end of the first year, somewhere into the second year, if students are really finding it too challenging, um, they can drop some of the aspects of it and do what we call DP courses. So they could do their maths, English and science in a higher level. And they're really worthwhile courses. Yeah. And they, we can get equivalents within the UAE for, for universities within the UAE through those courses. Um, so yeah, you, there is ways through. So it's not just there a black through. and white, all or nothing, you can be flexible to yeah. here, which yeah. is wonderful. What, well, what we have to do is do mm -hmm. what's best for the, for the students, the individual students, yeah. Um, and yeah. And families. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that leads into my next question, which is about um, assessing students' learning. How do you do that at the, the school? Right. It's a big question then, When it comes it? to the IB, that's the biggest question. Yeah. Because, um, <laughs> Assessment is a tricky beast because when you're assessing students, what you're trying to find out is what do they know, what can they do. Yeah. Even those statements are, are very ambiguous. How do you know that a student knows something? How do you know that a student can do something? How can they demonstrate that they know? Yeah. If they know it today, will they still know it tomorrow? Does that matter? So the whole question of assessment is incredibly complex. What traditional um, curricula and school systems do is tend to ignore that complexity and give people a test. <laughs> and so teach and test, teach and teach test. Teach and test, teach and test. Yeah. And, and I'm in no way accusing uh, there's great schools out there that, that aren't mm. IB schools. With the IB, they, they engage with that complexity, that, that question about assessment. So instead of just giving a test where there's so many reasons, if you do a maths test, you get a question wrong. There's lots of reasons why you might get that question wrong. They've got nothing to do with whether you can do the maths. You might not be able to understand what the question's asking. You might um, be nervous because it's a test situation, so, so you can't think straight. It might be that you're just having an off day that day and you can't do it. So what the IB has built into it is the different criteria that we have to assess across and the different ways of assessing. So while we will have tests, of course, uh, we also have lots of other tasks. There's a lot um, put on... Uh, ongoing assessment. So in every lesson, teachers um, assessing what the kids are doing, listening to what they're saying, seeing what they're writing, keeping observational notes to, to right. see what they can do. Uh, and then setting tasks appropriately. It could be a research task. It could be a, a pop quiz within the class. It can be kids working together on group work. Uh, and the criteria for assessment is much more complex than they've got 8 out of 10. Mm which is really hard to explain to parents yeah. uh, and it's, yeah. it's a topic you can talk about for hours but the thing about the IB assessment is we know it works right. because we know that um, the MYP and the PYP is the best preparation for the DP and in the DP it does become more high stakes there is the final test yeah. although there is internal there's more structure, assessments right? as well the yeah, it's there's more structure it still has that element of internal assessment mm. that, that's really important, but there are final exams at the end of the DP, and they do um, you know, give students entry into universities and different universities. So we know that the assessment works through the PYP and the MYP because we know it works at DP. Yeah. Um, they are bringing in, the IB has, has introduced um, MYP online assessments. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in assessment, if people are, as teachers are, parents are. Yeah, uh, to look at the MYP online assessments because, okay. quite frankly, they're genius. They're so innovative in what they do because the MYP doesn't have prescribed uh, content. So it doesn't tell you have to teach this, you have to teach that. But we obviously have the DP. So if we take maths as an example again, we know what the students need to do at DP. So then we then build so the backwards. NYP backwards from ah. that. But what it allows us is to bring in lots of local flavour, uh, to respond to um, local curricula and, and 
demands that we have from right. DSIB, KHDA. And it makes it a really personal and robust curriculum. What that means, of course, is everybody's MYP maths course looks slightly different. Mm. So then when they want to bring in a uniformed assessment tool, it's hard. That's very difficult. <coughs> True. So what they've done is they've created these wonderful online tests where there is some prescribed content that they've had to bring in for it, but largely it's about students demonstrating those skills of being able to understand maths, being able to use maths, being able to articulate their maths, with the, the actual content of the maths being a bit more fluid. So it really sounds like you're preparing these children for the 21st century. Uh, like absolutely. They're getting ready to be thinkers and absolutely. To, a, 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 criticism, a criticism that's thrown out the education systems is that we're still living in Victorian era. Um, was the IB isn't. The IB really isn't. And yeah. um, it does get a little bit messy sometimes. And it is a bit more difficult for parents to understand. And it's obviously a big role that we have is to try and explain this to yeah. parents more. Yeah. Um, but it is definitely something new and something different and something better. Yeah. Uh, and it works. We know it works because we know the DP students go on to the best universities in the world and more importantly they're successful. The dropout rate in university of DP students is far lower than for other national curricula. It's a very interesting point. Yeah. yeah, very good point. And the last question that we have is what's the unique features of your school? If you were to tell people about Uptown, what would you, what would you tell them? Well, I think what's unique about every school is, is the people people that make it different, the people that gives it the, its flavour and its character. Well, I've worked at some fantastic schools across the world, but I've never worked in a school where it's, there's such a feeling of family, and that's the parents, the students, and the, the staff as well. The relationships around Uptown are, are, are really something to behold, and when we have new staff coming in, we have new students coming in, often students that have had a, a troubled time in other schools, they come to Uptown and they feel that warmth, wow. they feel that kindness come through. And it's just a lovely place to turn up to. Everyone. Well, that's a lovely ending. Well, Chris, thank you very much. Absolutely. It's been Jesus. wonderful finding out a little bit more about your school and the great things that are going on here. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.